Hey guys, so let's quickly go through um, a situation that you might come across, which is when you have an alcohol like this. For example, you have this alcohol. And then you'll ask what happens when it gets dehydrated, right? So, so we have um, some concentrated H2SO4, the catalyst required for dehydration. And we're going to get water plus one, you know, we can see that there you know, we could get something like, like this, right? You know, this, this um, hydroxide could get removed along with a hydrogen from over here. And then you'd form a double bond along here. But of course you could also remove a hydrogen from this side. So we could also form the second um, one. So how do we decide which one forms? Well, the answer is both will form, but it's kind of like, in, uh, if you remember Markovnikov, one forms more than the other. So this one here is going to be the major product, and this is going to be the minor product. So how do we know that? Well, I'm going to introduce you to a rule that will explain why. And after we learn the rule, we're going to see some examples. And after the examples, we're going to go through um, the kind of mechanism, you know, why does it work? So the rule is called, so, you know, the way that we can tell which one's going to be the major, which one's going to be the minor, is called Zaitsev's rule. Zaitsev's rule. So it's also Russian, a bit like um, uh, Markovnikov. So Zaitsev's rule um, basically says the carbon, the carbon with more, uh, sorry, the carbon attached to more carbons, two more carbons, will get the bond. And you know to see this, we can have a look at this example, right? You can see here, this carbon on the right, this carbon on the right has more carbon attached. It's attached to one, two carbons. Whereas if we consider this carbon here, if we consider maybe the green carbon, if we make him green, the green carbon only has one attachment. Therefore, the blue carbon is a better candidate according to the rule. If I'm also not lazy and I draw on all the hydrogens, then we can see another way of expressing Zaitsev's rule is the, the, um, the carbon with less hydrogens will lose the hydrogen. You can see here, as part of the, um, as part of the dehydration process, this entire part will be removed. So that entire part will be removed and hence the double bond will form across there. <laughs> and a colloquial way to express this might, is um, the poor get poorer. Which is kind of um, in cahoots with the previous one, which is the rich get richer um, for Markovnikov's rule. Um, so that's the rule itself. It's pretty simple, um, pretty self-explanatory. Let's go through a few examples just to kind of um, get ourselves a bit acquainted with it, and then we'll see um, why it might be true. Let's have a look at um, a few examples. So have a go at predicting um, what the uh, products of these two will be, which one's the major, which one's the minor, uh, if these both undergo dehydration. What would the products look like? Have a go, come on. Alright, I'm going to assume that you've had a go. So let's have a look here. So for the first one, 
Um, for the first one, the answer is going to be, so you can see, if we begin to apply Markovnikov's rule here, then what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see that um, we have two options. So, so of course, when we have dehydration, we always have a H2O pop out. Do not forget it. It's like plus C in that, in our integration, right? So write it first. So we have two options. We can either have this one, or we can have that one, All right? This could go either left or it could go right. How do we tell which one's the more likely one? Well, we simply have a look, right? This carbon is connected to only one carbon. This carbon is connected to two carbons, one, two. And remember, Zaitsev's rule says that the carbon connected to more carbons will be the one that gets the double bond. Therefore, this is the major product, and this is the minor. Fantastic. Let's have a go at the second one. Let's try and dehydrate this guy. So we have two products again. We have C, 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 either to the left or towards the right. Um, to the left or to the right. Now, this one's a bit of a tricky one. Let's see. So, how many, this carbon, how many carbons is this carbon attached to? One, two. How many carbons is this carbon, I'm sorry, is this carbon attached to? One, two. So actually, these are equally likely. So this is where Markovnikov, uh, sorry, <laughs> sidesteps will actually predict that they're equally likely because they have the same number of, um, they have the same number of attachments each. So now that we've gone through that, I'm, I want to go through some of the mechanisms, you know, why is this true? So why, so why is Markovnikov's, why is, sorry, sidesteps, you know, sidestep true? So I'm going to give you two ideas as to why Zaitsev is true. The first reason why Zaitsev is true is because of the of the electron donating, the electron donating nature of alkyl groups. Now I'll tell you what alkyl groups are in a sec. So let's just consider the first example that we had. So either this guy versus this guy. So an alkyl group is simply an alkyl group is simply um, for example if you consider a typical thing like this, this would be an alkyl group. Or you know if it was a bit longer like this, this whole thing would be an alkyl group. This is an, an alkane kind of part that sticks out. So if we were to redraw this I could, so, so we can, sorry, um, if we see here, we can see here that, that this, in, on, on this first, on the left one, we have one alkyl group here. And alkyl groups like to donate their electrons. So they would like to donate their electron. They push their electrons into this double bond. When you push the electrons into the double bond, that is going to be stabilizing. So electrons into, into double bond. stabilize it. So you can see here that um, here it's one group that pushes electrons in. Here we have two groups that push electrons in. You might say, oh, well, you know, this one's bigger, but uh, realistically the effect diminishes over t over distance. It's really mostly this guy that's doing most of the leg work. So you can see here now, we, we here we have double the amount of uh, alpha groups donating their electrons. The second, the second effect is, so that that's going to make so because you know, uh, on the right hand side one we have twice as many uh, electrons being donated. It's going to be uh, twice as stabilized. This is going to be more likely to actually finish the reaction, pop out. This might kind of just give up halfway through. The reaction will revert, and we'll go back to the original starting products, or something else will will, will happen. That's for the first reason why this is true. The second reason has to do with bond angles. So 
So with regards to the bond angles, what, what we're going to see is if you consider a traditional um, a, a alkane, we know that with an alkane, um, that the uh, bond angles here, sorry, that, that the uh, bond angles, say we have this kind of alkane here, that the bond angles between them are 109.5 degrees. Right, if you give me a sec, we can see here, here's a 3D model of um, the kind of thing that we were just looking at. And you, and you see here, the angle is indeed 109.5 degrees, and you know that's the angle that I'm talking about there, 109.5 degrees, right. But if we instead look at um, a, a alkene, right, we can see that the angles here are simply 120 degrees. And so you can see that how we're going from 109 to 120 degrees. So this 109.5 to 120 degrees, this is an increase in the distance between those alkyl groups, right? If you consider, let's say, um, this guy versus, let's, let's have it on the same side. Um, this guy versus the this guy. So you can see here um, on on the left hand side, these guys are going to be much more bunched together because they're in this alkane arrangement. Whereas on this side, these guys have all been able to to go into um, an alkene arrangement where the groups are going to be further apart. So this increases distance distances between um, carbon groups. Um, and what does this do? Well, if we increase the distance between carbon groups, this will decrease, decreases repulsion, right? And that's fantastic, right? Decreases the repulsion, really just increases stability. And let me show you this on the 3D model. So you can see here, this is the one on the left. Um, and you can see um, here's that double bond. You can see that the guys are all quite squished together. You, you, you can see that's quite a tight, awkward arrangement. Um, all the groups are very close to each other, and that means that you know this angle here between these you know, this this carbon and this carbon is only 109.5 degrees. That's very squishy. Uh, they feel a lot of repulsion. You know, you, you got to remember there's a lot of electrons that they have. They're all repelling each other. This is a very high energy state, right? So if you get a lot of you know. <clears throat> Um, you know, aggressive people and you bunch them all together, ah, it's very high energy. If we instead were to simply, um, if we were instead to change this into the other arrangement, if we change it into the other arrangement, you can see it's a lot more spacious, right? You can see, you can see, see now it's a, it's a lot more spacious, right? Everything is just less cramped. You can see that, that the angle between this carbon and this carbon has increased to 120 degrees, which means that they're, you know, now our, our aggressive people have become further apart. They're more relaxed, right? Because we're us utilizing that alkene arrangement. So therefore, this is going to be a more stable, it, it's going to be less, com it's going to be less aggressive, it's going to be less electron repulsion, it's going to be more stable. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.